Hello everyone, this is JJ and welcome back to another episode of Encyclopedia Bag. This week, we're going to talk about the nuances of producing the best flower with the maximum amount of terpenes and cannabinoids. Any given cultivar has a range of terpene and cannabinoid production delineated by its genetics. The maximum possible given production of these chemicals by the cultivar is what we would call its genetic potential. Throughout the grow process, the amount of genetic expressions is controlled by the nutrients, water, light, gas mix, and other factors. Let's assume as a grower, you are able to get the best nutrients, the best everything for your cultivar. All the way up until harvest, your plant is growing to genetic potential. Now it's time to dry and cure. We know from our own testing that over 75% of terpenes are lost from the drying process, sometimes much more depending on drying conditions. As drying is a necessary process, it becomes imperative to preserve the remaining terpenes as much as possible. However, it is difficult to determine when the flower has the most amount of terpenes. This is due to the fact that most flower will experience a significant shift in their terpene profile over time from more monoterpenes to more sesquiterpenes on a relative basis. This shift is the biggest complication and nuance in cannabis harvesting in modern day. How long of a cure is needed for a particular cultivar to develop the so-called best terpene profile? What about to develop the most total terpenes? What about the intersection of the best terpene profile and the most total terpenes? A compromise of both but at the maximum of the production possibility frontier of the cultivar. Funny thing is, we will never know unless we go through the cure with a variety of samples, each testing different variables. However, this would also only apply to this specific cultivar. Every strain, every individual breed may have its own optimal points based on your desired profile, but each would need to be tested. So in this sense, the genetic pro potential is a very fuzzy term. Since very few strains go through curing experiments to determine the best curing duration process, we may never know. It's sort of like the opportunity cost of the road not taken. Unless we test each cultivar with multiple curing conditions and with multiple samples during different time intervals to create a matrix of results, we really can't say what amounts of curing will have the flower process to its genetic potential. However, what we can do is provide a process that usually gets very close to what should be the genetic potential of the flower. As our industry progresses and matures, more and more users will want very specific experiences. And the only way to achieve such consistency in the product is to continue our research and create constants in the cultivation process so that the remaining variables can be easily isolated, tested, and optimized. And we believe terp lock is one of those constants a stable RH environment without airflow. Have you experienced a strain that has had its terpene profile change dramatically after the cure process? Let us know in the comments below. And see you all next time on Encyclopedia Bag.